And I still have with me in the studio the CEO of Goldwater River Sands Consort, that is um, Aliyu Umar. We're still seen having this conversation about security, about, you can hear all, half the news we talked about security. Now you also had uh, issues of Nigerians. Let's start with this different one before we come into the other matter. Nigerians are called on the, on the president sometime last week to sack the service chief, uh, chiefs for being incompetent. And this is also related to security matters. What are your thoughts on all of these? Where are we headed? Well, my thoughts are quite straightforward. And I'm surprised the president doesn't see it the way I do. Probably because he belongs to an older generation of soldiers. But then from my own younger perspective of soldiering, I'll tell you that at a point when you become generals, soldiering becomes pretty much like let me use football as an analogy because mm -hmm. Nigerians follow football. I don't, but let me use football. Mm -hmm. You see, there are players, we call them all footballers. Okay? But the technical advisor, is it, that's what they call them, right? Or is it coach now? One of those people. I guess coach. Okay. They actually don't see players. We see players, footballers rather. The technical advisor sees strikers, defenders. Is it sideliners? They call them now outside. Mm, I don't know. Sorry. Well, not they see them fan. by their rules. Good by their rules, mm -hmm. goalkeepers. Now that's the same thing that happens to generals. In fact, right from cadet, right from the cradle in the academy, you should, from the strengths and weaknesses of a cadet, know if he will make a good staff officer, mm. a good field officer or a command officer. Okay, the same way your coach will look at a player and say, no, this one won't play full time, mm -hmm. but he's dangerous enough for me to put him 20 minutes to the end of the match. So generals are not deities, they are not gods, they're human. They have strengths, they have weaknesses. Okay. Now what we do, or what should be done, is to posit generals in areas of their strengths. It's not only about the army. Companies do it. CEOs come and go. Mm -hmm. Now, the present set of service chiefs are stabilizers. Let me specifically talk about the army. Okay. As at the time the present chief of army staff came on board, much was in disarray. He was able to rebound them he was able to inspire them. He was able to drive them. If you profiled him properly, you'll discover that of the four possible human character attributes, he falls into one. As human beings, you are either a choleric, a melancholic, sanguine, or phlegmatic. That's correct. It also applies to the armed forces. Now, he was able to stabilize. Right now, we have optimized stabilization. We should have been into offensive. If you observe what is happening in the road is we're always repelling attacks. Mm -hmm. So we're on the defensive and we've been so for the past 10 years. So at a point in time, when you are done with stabilization and you want to move into the phase of consolidation, that master stabilizer may not be necessarily your best bet for the job. And that is when you will have to make a change. Mm -hmm. The problem with us is we're either in service or we're in retirement. We have not been able to be innovative and creative enough to understand that beyond serving and retirement, there is also a place where you can pull the right minds and think tanks that should be able to walk back to back with those on seat. And I don't know where we got this notion that the most senior man on ground has to be the chief. You don't agree with that? No, it doesn't have to be. If you go and look at other armies, there were, in fact, right now we've had a situation, we've had one, General Martin Luther Aguayi mm -hmm. was a general when General Yusuf 
the late General Yusuf was chief. Martin Luther Agoe was on a foreign assignment. Operationally, he wasn't under Yusuf, but administratively, he was right. under Yusuf. So we are looking at situations where I don't know what to think anymore. Imagination ability, innovation ability seem to be just stereotyped. We are looking at a situation where, as I speak to you right now in the army, whether anyone likes it or not, there is low morale. Mm. Let who wants to cry, cry. Ali Umar, Captain Blade said so. I'll tell you why. The military scenario is pretty much like a secondary school. There is SS3 down to JS1. That's right. And for JS1 to ever get to JS2, SS3 has to graduate. Mm -hmm. So what do you think happens if JS3 doesn't graduate? And you have to start clearing the bottom to make room for the restless younger ones to come up, but they'll never get there. Mm. Now, that in itself is going to cause the system to implode. I can bet you, because of what is happening, certain young, ambitious, aspiring officers to certain positions have lost that ability. Motivation. The reason is simple. The army runs on age. Other than age, it also runs on what you call rank. So you face out every year. Classes face out every year. Now there are some classes that there is no magic about it. Their time to become chiefs have already expired. Hmm. And they're and, still there. And they're still <clears throat> there, probably counting days to when they are old enough or have spent enough years to leave. Constitutionally, we have an arrangement for service chiefs. Now, in my own ex-military intelligence officer's head, it could get to that stage where these senior military officers who are not happy will work against the system. All the successes we've made will be eroded. I expect my president to know that. But it doesn't seem he does. But He's an scary. old general. I never made general. Got nowhere near it. If I can't think about it, then his own thoughts should be on the moon about it. But that's not seemingly the case. Hmm. The generals we have are so useful, you don't want them to go, fine, what's John Chief of Staff about? What John Chief of Staff about? Let's go and take models from countries that have John Chiefs of Staff. John Chiefs of Staff are simply very, the most senior American officer is in the John Chiefs, and he's not the Chief of the Army or the Chief of the Navy. And he still works directly with the president while the chief of army staff and naval staff will go do their things. So there are actually positions that the president can create that will by far, okay, mm -hmm. be superior to the service chiefs. We have the chief of defense staff, but then for me, that one is obsolete. It's sounding like something from the Murtala Mohammed years. We really have to bring it up to 2020 earth standards. Mm. That's what is happening. So the army itself, you can see in the Northeast, is beginning to, you know, do I say, do I say it's, it's recycling uh, defeats? A lot of things are happening. People are being beheaded. Bishops are being killed. Mm. We hear politicians saying that we should not allow religion and ethnicity or religion as the insurgents are doing to divide us. And I'm like, really? The insurgents learned how to use religion to divide us from the politicians. I must, I must say thank you, really. You are most welcome. For, you know, for bringing this uh, new perspective and deeper perspective into the matter. Uh, Abliu Umarde, who is the CEO of Goldwater, River Sands and Consult.